Those who say that I wrote nothing else but about democracy have a point. So I stuck to my subject and I began to read as widely as I could some 10 years ago, to pour through all kinds of stuff, to try to get off the main pathways. One day, surrounded by people much cleverer than me in my usual seat in the British Library, I came across a book by Nahum Capon. For those of you who may not know him, he was the last historian to attempt a full-scale history of democracy. An American writing after the Civil War, someone who thought that through his history of democracy could repair the torn fabric of the American polity after the terrible violence of the Civil War. Nahum Capon had a basic thesis. Democracy was a God-given ideal. It gradually works its way into the world in institutional form, and it is best developed in the United States of America. Nahum Capon wrote about democracy as if by the grace of God, and it rather reminded me of a certain recent American president who also liked to speak about democracy as a God-given ideal, a gift to the Americans, who would in turn take it to the world. In November 2003, President George W. Bush delivered a speech on the future of democracy, which ran as follows. As the 20th century ended, he said to generous applause, there were around 120 democracies in the world and I can assure you, more are on the way. He quickly added, we've witnessed in little over a generation the swiftest advance of freedom in the 2,500 year story of democracy. Historians in the future will offer their own explanations for why this happened, yet we already know some of the reasons they will cite. It's no accident that the rise of so many democracies took place in a time when the world's most influential nation was itself a democracy. With those words, I decided to take on George W. Bush to try my hand at writing the first fresh history of democracy for over a century, to tell the story differently, to break cliches, to shatter myths, to expose things that we didn't know about democracy, to highlight things that we still not, do not know about democracy. Beginning with the most astonishing finding that both the language and the basic institutions of early democracy are not Greek gifts to the world, but in fact, Eastern inventions. The language of democracy is at least as old as Linear B, and the basic unit of early democracy, the assembly, is an invention of Syria, Mesopotamia, the countries that are today Syria, Iraq, and Iran. The life and death of democracy contains other new insights. It's the first history of democracy to include the world of it, early Islam within its narrative. It contains a, a fresh account of the origins of representative government in the European region and the birth of representative democracy at the end of the 18th century in the Atlantic region, and the spread of its ideals to Spanish America, to North America, to Australia. The book uh, contains an account of the basic transformations that have happened in democracy since 1945, and the birth of what I call monetary democracy. But above all, there is an idea that runs through the end of the book that the future of democracy will be decided in the Asia and Pacific region. The center of gravity of democracy has moved to this part of the world. And that means, above all, that what happens within China and the behavior of China on a global scale will co-determine the fate of democracy. Finally, and perhaps least obviously, the life and death of democracy is an attempt to introduce readers to convince readers of the profound ways in which democracy, beginning uh, before the Greek times, has profoundly altered our experience of the world. Which is to say, democracy brought a sense of humility to the world, of the need to humble the powerful. 
a sense of the contingency of power relations, the possibility of changing them, and the possibility of equality among human beings. This book is a contribution to the democratization of democracy and to the experience of democracy. It certainly prepares the way for the next historian of democracy. It doesn't suppose that it's the last word. The last word perhaps should go to Walt Whitman, the great 19th century American poet of democracy, who rightly pointed out, I think, that the history of democracy could never be completed because democracy itself had not yet been built.